Welcome again to the Kitchen of the Celticator. I'm Chef Eric McBride. And we're on our weekly crusade to teach exactly what is Celtic cuisine. Because if you all know, it doesn't fit in the nice little parameters for all the culinary world. So today we're doing something that's real. It's been adopted as being Celtic food. It may not necessarily for it all. We are going to be doing a Scotch egg today. Now, Scotch eggs are relatively, they're thought of maybe to be an English dish or some place. There's actually a place down in, in England that claims that they're the first ones. But it's actually based off of an earlier dish called a toad in a hole. And a toad in a hole basically was in a frying pan uh, where you had the butter for it all. You basically brined your sausages and you arranged them out there. And then you poured the egg on top of it and cooked up the egg like that. Kind of made like an omelet with the sausage. That goes back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Putting it with bread and for it all is more of a French style. And it isn't, a lot of people forget that frying, deep frying food doesn't come into really into European cooking, except from France from the late 1800s or late 1700s, early 1800s or so. So it was adopted like that. And as you know, Scottish cuisine borrows heavily from French cuisine. So somewhere in the mix of all that, is the actual basis but we're going to be going for our dish today so if you don't know what scotch eggs are they're pretty much a hard-boiled egg encased in sausage rolled in breadcrumbs and then fried for it all sometimes you, if you want, like you could also bake it about 90 minutes or so so what we're looking for is a nice ground sausage meat that i've already got about a pound of it here and you want to get ones that have a lot of sage into it for it all if it doesn't if you can't get anything you want to add a little bit more then we're also going to add a little bit of our Celtic Cater All Gaelic Seasoning. Now, if you've not ever used any of our stuff like that, uh, you can go to the website, thecelticator.com, uh, C-E-L-T-I-C-C-A-T-E-R-E-R, -E -E and you can go and hit order it from there. Uh, we'd also like just take it this moment here. If you're watching this right now on Facebook, please go down below where it says like and like our page here, the Celtic Cater and Chef Eric McBride. So, what we're going to put in, we're going to very liberally place in a lot of this, about, about a tablespoon and a half. And this contains thyme, and not just any thyme, but what's called Mediterranean thyme, which is actually an English thyme plant grown in the Mediterranean. So you take a plant that's not used to having much sunlight, and you grow it in an area that's got lots and lots, and it just has the smorgasbord of all, and really needs to have a lot of feast on it. So it has thyme, Mediterranean thyme, garlic powder and a little bit of white pepper for it. We're going to take this and we're going to take an onion and put it all together here. And the biggest thing right now is to try to go and mix the onions in with the meat. Because you want to go to try to get everything into the meat itself. Now sometimes I'll, I'll add parsley in with this as well. But the big thing I like to do, whether you're going to go and if you've ever made scotch eggs before and you've baked them, because not everybody wants to deep fry the sausage. If you want to go and bake them, it takes about 90 minutes at about 400 degrees. But then you have to watch out for as well is, is that the, depending on the sausage you get, how much fat is in it, it can pull back from the egg itself. And that happens a lot. One of the ways to do that is by just taking raw egg cracking it and mixing that egg yolk and white in with the whole mixture here. What that is, it's a binding agent and it's going to help hold our entire flavoring together. Now because I didn't put any parsley into this, I'm going to come back and add a little bit more of my all Gaelic seasoning really a little bit more of the time is what I want and now I've got my mixtures you can kind of see through that for all got a nice little color for all so now we're going to take our hard-boiled eggs now if you want to do this kind of little special if this changes based on what your altitude is but I've taken my eggs and I've hard-boiled them for exactly seven minutes that means I had it boiling then I placed the egg in it they are a little soft and so they're what they call chef's eggs now, chef's eggs, when you find a chef's salad or so, is when you cut it up, it's still a bright orange kind of color. It's almost slightly runny. And we kind of want this because we don't want to, because they're going to go into a cooking and going to get really cooked up. If you're baking your your uh, 
scotch eggs, you don't have to worry about this. But if you're frying them, this is a nice way because you can still get a little gooeyness out of this. Out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our egg. I'm going to take a little bit of about a handful of the sausage meat. Place the egg around it. And very carefully kind of mold everything around it. Now, what I'm going to be doing now is we're going to take this and roll it in some flour. Let's get another one of these here going, going. Now, I've got my fryer at 325 degrees going at this moment, cooking up. And we're only going to want a couple minutes. What are we going to do? So, what we once we get this all... You want to pack this in. Again, give me a little tough to kind of get that egg right there in the center. Sometimes it helps to go, once you've taken your sausage mix, put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Let it dehydrate just a little bit. We're moving along a little bit faster. We're going to be using a little bit of the flour here to hydrate. And now I'm going to go and take it to my next stages for it. So, we've got a little flour, and let's see, let's actually mix this around here. It's got it right into our order. Of a, so I have some flour, some, that I rolled it in, I have some egg wash, just beaded eggs for it all, and I have some breadcrumbs. Now we're using, and I, what I prefer, most chefs like to use, is what's called panko breadcrumbs, sometimes known Japanese style breadcrumbs. They're very, very light and flaky. They do tend to go and cook much faster. You can use any breadcrumbs you like, but those tend to have one of some of the better flavors for it all. So we're going to take our scotch eggs, rolled in flour. That helps with a little cohesiveness as well. And we're going to put it into our egg wash there, making sure you kind of get every bit of the egg around it. There we go. A little messy, messy. Just roll it right into your breadcrumbs. Make sure again, every bit, and I kind of like to go and pound it up a little bit, just a little bit, to get my shape again, before I place it into my bath. All right, so this one's up. Now, you're noticing the size of my scotch eggs, all right? That's because I like to make Loch Ness Monster style eggs, all right? You want to have the full flavor of this. I hate it when I go to a festival and they give you this, they give you half an egg, and a little bit of sausage for you. I'll charge you ten dollars. Now, if you want something like really good, you want, like I said, baseball size. And we'll get just as good a flavor out of this. Alright, we get all that, mix it in with our flour, putting our egg wash and now our breadcrumbs. And we'll place that in our other basket here for it all. So now we can go through all this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and start cooking them down right now. And while that is going, we'll change out our gloves a little bit. You want to keep an eye, and you want to toss this around so that our every bit of the breadcrumb gets fried up. Keep an eye on that for all. Put some of this aside here because then what we're going to do now is work on the sauce. And a lot of people don't even go this far. And this is where a lot of really good flavor comes from. So to make a good sauce, we're going to use a mayonnaise base. You could use yogurt, but the mayo base is going to. Because what is mayo? Anybody want to know what mayo? Mayo is actually made from whipped eggs and oil. So it is the best thing to go with an egg dish. So we get about half a cup of our mayo here. And we're going to take a little bit, come over to my bar over here, and we're going to go and do a little bit, about a quarter cup of white wine. Put the two of those together. Add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. A few drops. Let's make sure our scotch eggs are getting completely cooked all the way around. A 
and a little lemon juice. Just a few squirts. And then what we're gonna do, you can put either some red chili flakes in or I like to put a little bit of the Celticator five pepper seasoning in here. A little cayenne or so, it'll help out. It gives it a little bit of distinction flavors as well as just a little bit of color, which is what we want. No more than about a half a teaspoon. And whip this all up. Now if you get a little runny, like I've got mine right here. So this is a little runny of the sauce. If a little bit too much of my white wine into it, we can just add a little bit more of our mayonnaise to thicken it up. There we go. That's about the right, right consistency that I want. And I'm going to add a little bit more of my five pepper seasoning. So basically you should be getting a little, nice little red polka dotted white sauce for it all. And it does really, really go well with our scotch eggs. So we're gonna go back here really quickly, go check on our scotch eggs here. My bigger one of the two seems to be cooking a little slower. Now, if you wanna get the full directions for this recipe, you need to go to my uh, business Facebook page, The Celticator and Chef Eric McBride. And the post it up last Wednesday was out of the Scottish cookbook, all the directions that you needed to make our scotch eggs for them. Now I want to take a moment as well to go and tell you we also have a nice little competition that's starting up here uh, on Monday here. We have now launched four new spices for the Celticator. If you've been buying and getting any of the Celticators, we'll be interested on some of the newer ones. We have a Nordic warming spice. Now a Nordic warming spice has got a little cardamom and cloves in there and cinnamon. Uh, from Saigon, it's good for the stewed or baked fruit, like apples and uh, um, oranges, tambourine, uh, tangerines or so, but also with strawberries and blueberries and stuff. It can be used for a lot. It also goes well in with different types of cheeses. If you make cheese from your home, this is something that was added to it all, as well as making your own spice butter. This is really, really good. One of our other new ones here is our Island of Mad rub now this rub is good for uh, both fish and poultry it's got a little bit of well, parsley and lemon rind but bay leaves um, ground mustard powder into it as well uh, paprika celery salt this can be used that as well as with mushrooms and kind of a seasoning for it. we have our welsh style fish and vegetable rub which is predominantly um, thyme and horseradish but it also has a little bit some of the other ingredients um, like garlic powder and uh, a little sage and some shallot salt into it. This is really good on top of any kind of fish as a little rub. Uh, shrimp, crab meat, also good with any types of vegetables, especially if you want to stew them. And on top of it, it's great with mushrooms as well. And then our last one is our island, our Shetland Island lemon spice. Now this is one that kind of borrows a little bit from both Nordic and Celtic cuisine for all because Shetland Islands, if you know, is way up in the north, almost halfway between Scotland and Norway. And so this one does really good with cod and with uh, ha hake, haddock, and so fish is for like that, and it goes really good. So what we've got these four, and they're on our website, thecelticator.com, but we're gonna have a little competition right now. So for those of you who have any of the cookbooks and cook with any of the spices that we have right now, over this next week, I want you to go and find whatever's your favorite recipe that uses one of our previous 10 uh, spices for it all. Makes it, take a picture of it and post it back to us at the Celticator and Chef Eric McBride on our Facebook page. At the end of the week, next week, we're gonna choose five winners. And out of those five winners, what we're gonna go and get, they're gonna each get in a full set of the new spices. But I want you to go take your best, your favorite dish that uses one of our spices and take the best picture of it. And also tell us why you like that dish for them. Please, Lord. We're going to post it up for everybody to kind of get to see for it, all the winners and stuff. So, we get right now back to our scotch egg here. I'm going to take out one of them here because the other one still looks like it needs just a little bit longer here. And my 
glove back on here. I'm gonna take out our scotch egg nice and hot. And I'm gonna cut that in half. Oh and with a little bit of the sauce right here. And there we go. And as you can see, the way I've got this point where it's got the eggs at seven minutes, the eggs are still nice and orange for all, but they're all cooked through. It's not overly done. And you've got a really good flavor for it all. So this is, like I said, a scotch egg for it all. It's in our scotch cookbook. Please go to, if you haven't got any of your cookbooks, please go to thecelticator.com. That's C-E-L-T-I-C-C-A-T-E-R-E-R. -E -E and for a competition, go to our Facebook page, the Celticator and Chef Eric McBride, a Chef Eric W. McBride. And we have to thank you all very much. And as they say in Gaelic, Slanja Fleur, we all meet again. Thank you, Eric.